I'm just going to dance up here, I think, or something. I don't know. <laughs> dance for the Lord. I'm celebrating Jesus. Again, we just came out of our celebration series, and we're now in our series on excellence as we are talking about our core values, the Heights Church core values. And excellence is one of our core values. And I tell you what, it's the biggest challenge to try to write a series on excellence, and then you start looking at your life and see all the things that are not excellent in your life. And you think, Lord, am I qualified to preach this? But I'm telling you, God is excellent. Jesus is the spirit of excellence, right? And so, again, we're talking about excellence on the inside this morning. Because I thought, what good is it to be excellent on the outside page if on the inside you're not excellent, right? I mean, that's kind of like the most important thing. It's, it's so important. It's vital as we as we grow, to look at the inside before we look at the outside. And I'm not preaching that you can be saved by doing good, because some people might misunderstand what I'm saying and say, well, if I can just be excellent enough, I can get saved or go to heaven. But you're not saved by doing good, but because you're saved, you should do good, right? That's the difference. And so God on the inside of us produces excellence on the outside of us. And number one, if you're taking notes, and also just so you know, we have a podcast now that's on so many different platforms. I don't know. James has them all. If you didn't notice the slide at the beginning or in the foyer on the TV, you can uh, scan those with your phone. And whatever you do in any form of podcasting, it's there. So these messages now are recorded, and you can watch those or listen to those. We'll have video at some point. Uh, my brother here is videoing, and I'm not even sure. How are you, sir? Good. <laughs> Just so you know, somebody has said, how can I get that video? Well, that's his video and his phone, so you'll have to talk to him about it. But uh, we're glad you're videoing. But we have a podcast now, too, where you can actually listen if you'd like. Um, and then also, just as we try to do things more excellently, we're so thankful for, our, for everyone, all the volunteers and the team and the staff that do it. And so, again, we want to say thank you to James for all that. You can also get the notes from this service if you have the Uversion app on your phone. You can go there, and those notes will be there for you as well, so you don't have to uh, type as your fast as your thumbs can go. So number one, being excellent starts on the inside. In Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good. That's what he did. He just went about doing good. And from this scripture, we see that Jesus is more than just a preacher. He's a doer. He went about doing good, right? So we need to be doers of the word and not just hearers, but also doers and not just preachers, right? I'm talking to myself here. And so again, a lot of people want to preach, but the power is in the doing. Another way to say that too is Jesus went around not doing bad. Think about that. If he went around doing good, then that means he went around not doing bad. Like Jesus wasn't going around. He didn't have Romans road rage. <laughs> Jesus didn't go around keying people's donkeys. I mean, what kind of person would key a donkey? I mean, that, who would do that? It's terrible. Jesus, Jesus went about doing good. And there are things we have to look in our life and say, am I being like Jesus in what I'm doing? Can I just go about doing good? Because not everything Jesus did was miraculous. A lot of people think, well, I couldn't be like Jesus and do all those miracles. First of all, yes, you can, because God made a way through the Holy Spirit. But secondly, a lot of what Jesus did was just practically helping people. We can all do that and do that to a better degree or to love our neighbor a little bit more, right? Yeah. I think that's important. And so Jesus probably went around picking up trash as he saw it. You know, he might have straightened road signs as they were traveling. Oh, that's a little crooked. Let's, let's have a spirit of excellence here in Israel, right? He might have fixed, hey, I notice your door's broken. Let me fix that. I'm a carpenter. I know how to do this. You know, so again, there are things that Jesus just went about doing good. And again, it wasn't always miraculous. So excellence in our lives is going around and just doing good. Jesus is excellent in every way. And so really, if we look at his life, he's the perfect example to all of us, right? 
We see people in the world that we want to be like because they seemingly have it all together on the outside. And we think, man, I want to be like them. But then we don't know the inside. As we're looking at these celebrities or people that we see on TV that people idolize, you know, and they say, man, I want to be like them. Oh, to be like that. But you don't know what's on the inside of them. They may have excellence on the outside, but I'm telling you, number one, most important, is excellent on the inside. And yet you see so many of these celebrities and people that are famous that are miserable, they're drinking, they're committing suicide because they hate themselves on the inside. That's what's most important, right? We look on the outside, but God looks on the heart, right, the inside. You got it right. I got it wrong. Again, I want to be like Christ. Deuteronomy 32, 4 says, He is the rock. Sorry, Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> Jesus is the rock. That name was already taken before you were ever born. It says, He is the rock. His work is perfect for all his ways are justice, a God of truth and without injustice. Righteous and upright is he. We should daily be changing to be more like the rock. Spiritually speaking, like Jesus, right? Because he is our perfect example. And it's a change that happens on the inside first. So how does it happen? How does true excellence come? It comes by the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. You get filled with something better than yourself. Amen? Amen? Because if you're just filled with yourself, they say the person that's all wrapped up in the self, it makes a puny little package. Not much. You know, I think about the countless testimonies of people that I've seen that their life was in such a bad shape, in such a bad way. Guys I know, like Charlie Pryor, he was a man who was alcoholic. I knew a lady in our church that she used to work on cars and it worked for a body shop. And he used to bring his car in all the time, put his keys on the tire because he was drunk the night before and crashed it and wrecked it and needed to get it fixed. He got saved. Jesus came in his life and he had a new level of excellence and was a changed man. I never knew him from the past. I said, really? That guy? You're kidding. You would never know. The guy who used to pastor this church, he was the associate to my dad. When my dad pastored here, his name was Dan Boone. He ended up pastoring this very church. It, back then, it was Crown of Life. Paige remembers. And Nancy, y'all remember. He, if you knew him before... My dad told me stories. He was a, a car, he had a car dealership, and yet he would, alcoholic, he would go home, and at one point he jumped on the glass coffee table and smashed it, putting fists through walls as he was so angry and bitter, and yet God saved him. He's one of the greatest Christians I know today, one of the most awesome men of God I've ever known. You would never know that from him. I know a lady who... Uh, she was a gas station worker at our uh, previous church, and we just went in and saw her. She was a drug dealer. She deal, would deal drugs there, and I'm telling you, she was rough, <laughs> and God touched her and changed her life. She started coming to church, and then started going out soul winning with us. We trained her and taught her. Her name is Veronica uh, Sosa. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to just... This morning, I thought, I haven't talked to her in a while. I wonder if she's still serving the Lord. Uh, and so I, I looked her up on her Facebook. And so I'm just going to read. It says on her Facebook, I am a mighty woman of God, on fire, anointed and appointed for such a time as this. I'm an evangelist. That's on her profile. And so then I look. What's the first last thing she posts? She says, today at 10 a.m., join us. So we can train you how to lead people to the Lord, answer any questions, and then go out to the field to win the loss. You don't want to miss this. That's where she is now. From drug dealer to Holy Ghost dealer. Come on. I'm telling you, I've seen the spirit of excellence get a hold of people and change them. And you would say, no way you used to be that old you. Hallelujah. Uh, 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, All of us, with no covering on our faces, show the shining greatness of the Lord as in a mirror. All the time we're being changed to look like Him with more and more of His shining greatness. And this change is from the Lord who is the Spirit. 
Wow, that's powerful. And we look at the lack of excellence in our lives compared to Jesus. Sometimes it can be overwhelming, you know. But let me tell you something my dad used to always say. He would say, by the mile, it's a trial. By the yard, it's hard. But by the inch, it's a cinch. Take it inch by inch. We're being changed from glory to glory to glory. Every service, every day, we're more like him. And you may not be where you want to be, but thank God you're not where you used to be. Amen? Amen. Thank God for that. So, again, in the Bible, David, he first killed a lion, then he killed a bear, and then he killed Goliath, right? So you might be looking at your life and saying, oh, you don't know what's wrong with me. I've got a Goliath. Uh, to try to attack well hey just get the lion first then get the bear and then we'll hey let god take care of the the giants in your life you just trust him and throw the rocks amen so we have to look at the little things to stop and to solve and have excellence in the big things in our life and as we do that, we'll see our ships start to turn around. You know, just like uh, little predators come to steal the sheep. As the Bible says in Song of Solomon 2.15, the little foxes spoil the vine, right? If you want more excellence in our life, we've got to get rid of those little things that are spoiling our vine. Pastor Barry Whitehead from the Burleson campus preached an awesome message on, at our Propel conference. I encourage you to go listen to that sometime. It's called The Little Foxes, and it'll go more along those lines, but I believe that would be a blessing to you. But I was also thinking about this book called The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell, and in this book, he was telling a story about how New York police set up a mobile police station because they found as they were out looking for criminals in New York, which you can imagine that would be a tough task, they decided they were going to go try to stop crime in the subway. They go down there and they notice people were hopping the turnstiles, those things, you know, where you have to put in your $2 and then the thing opens like at Six Flags or whatever, you know, if you've never been to a New York subway. And so then the thing will open and let you through, right? And people were hopping those without paying. And so what they decided was we're going to start arresting people for that and checking them and see what their criminal background is. And, you know, they found some of the most wanted, notorious criminals in New York because they were hopping the $2 turnstiles. And they realized that people that, cr that commit the big crimes commit the small crimes first. Right? And so they stopped it then. And crime was reduced by 75% in New York City in the subways. Isn't that amazing? I just think, Wow. And you know, um, the book of Matthew, Jesus tells a parable of the faithful servant who was given five talents, right? Actually, five talents was quite a bit of money. But he was faithful and he used the five talents of money to make five more. And this is what Jesus said in Matthew 25, 21. His Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things enter into the joy of the Lord. And so I read this story about how the master did this, and I thought, I'm going to try this. I was a youth pastor at the time. I think this was about 2014. And so I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give some money to some young people here. Who, who wants a dollar? I'm going to give you a dollar. And there were four youth that raised their hand. I said, all right, I'm going to put you to work. I give each of you a dollar, and you have one week to make it grow and bring back whatever you grow it with. And so they all took it. And I realized, hey, this really, this scripture is, parable is pretty accurate. Two of those people never showed up. My <laughs> dollars were gone. <laughs> One guy, he took his dollar, though, and he went to school, and he did a lottery, basically, where people have chipped in money, and then whoever chipped in, you know, they, they won tickets or whatever, and then they won the dollar with their change. And so he ended up with $2. And doubled it. I don't know if it was legal, but I, it might have been illegal, actually. Probably was. So I'm not recommending that. Uh, but I thought, hey, at least he brought my dollar back. I was proud of him. High five. Another guy, he took that dollar and he went out and he bought some lotion. And then he went around giving foot massages with this lotion. I mean, I was like, oh, my gosh, that is commitment. We laugh and think that is so gross, but he made $52. Wow. 
give him foot rubs with this lotion. So when he came back, I said, give me my dollar back. And the other guy, give me my dollar back. And I said, all right, you get to keep your $51 and you get to keep the dollar you made. I'm going to do it again. Who here wants? So I gave those two out. And, and then like the next week, one guy, he ended up buying uh, dental floss for a dollar and he sold it for $5. But anyway, it's kind of like teaching entrepreneurialism. But that's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, hey, I want you to be excellent in what I give you and do something with what you've got because this is the test for eternity. Think about it. This is the test for eternity. How excellent are you? Some people might think, well, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, this is the proving ground. For where you're going to be. Moral excellence starts with the little things. You know. A lot of people think. I would never commit a large crime. But they're committing small crimes daily. Like speeding. Not wearing a seatbelt. Driving with no insurance. Those type things. Those are crimes. I know. We got arrested for that one time. For not having insurance. And went to jail here in Granbury, Texas. I was like what? For not having insurance? I was 10 years old. I'll never forget the police were on the radio. We've got a juvenile, whatever age. And I thought, I'm a juvenile now. <laughs> it was crazy. Anyway, the things we do sometimes that are small that you would think, well, you know, the insurance is out. Well, we didn't renew it. Well, that's illegal. Again, excellence is saying keep the insurance. Keep the tires rotated, right? Keep the air in them. A lot of people think the devil's attacking me. He blew out my tire. And you say, no, you just haven't rotated them in 10 years. It's a miracle they lasted this long. Right? Excellence. And again, not preaching condemnation. Because I know some people are like, oh, Lord, he's preaching to me. <laughs> preaching to myself. Romans 3, 9 says, what then? Are we better than they? Not at all. For we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks, that they are all under sin, right? All of us, as it is written in verse 10, there is none righteous, no, not one. We've all blown it. We've all been speeding when we shouldn't have been, right? There are things that we do. And again, I'm not judging, but I'm saying we need Jesus on the inside to be excellent on the outside. And Jesus will cleanse us. In Matthew 23, 26, Jesus said, First clean the inside of a cup, then the outside will also be clean. So number one point, being excellent starts on the inside. Number two point, excellence is doing what is right just because it's right. That's important. Do what's right just because it's right. Psalms 1830 says, your way is perfect, talking about God. Your way is perfect, Lord, and your word is correct. You are a shield for those who run to you for help. You alone are God. Only you are a mighty rock. You give me strength, and you guide me right. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He guides us right, and he puts the want to on the inside of us to do what's right. It's awesome. If you don't have that, I encourage you, ask God, Lord, put the want to inside of me. And he will. He answers that prayer. So when Jesus comes in your life, he brings that desire. And then all of a sudden, when people get born again or they get saved or even just give their life to Christ in a new, fresh way, it's like the sky is bluer, the grass is greener, the birds are chirpier, the flowers are flowerier, and everything is awesome. It's wonderful. And all of a sudden, you just say, you know what? I don't, I don't want to uh, keep undersized fish anymore. This is a fishing town, right? Come on. <laughs> you might have done that yesterday. I don't know. You want to, all of a sudden, you want to keep your word. You want to be a man of your word. I don't know if you experienced that, but I want to be a person of my word. To say, Lord, if I say that, I want to keep that. That's excellence. That's something in, in, in us from the Holy Spirit that makes us want to tell the truth and be honest and not cheat on our taxes or uh, maybe not run red lights and not take things that are not yours. I know the world has a hard time with the Ten Commandments, you know. Like, oh, we can't have the Ten Commandments on the walls of our schools or anything because that's separation of church and state. we got to do that. And I think, but how many of you would want to live next to anybody that didn't keep those Ten Commandments? Right? I think it's something we would all enjoy. Not that they save you, but because you're saved, you enjoy doing those things. Excellent is doing what's right 
just because it's right. Third point, excellence does what is right even when nobody is watching. Boy, that'll preach. You know, a lot of times we do what's right when everybody's watching, right? I don't know if you're like me at all. When everybody's watching, you're doing right. And then when nobody's watching, okay, that's your chance to do wrong. But the, the thought is, I saw this sign one time at a store, and it said, even if we don't catch you shoplifting, God already has. And I thought, whoa, that'll preach. That's true about life. There are things God's always watching, and he sees everything. Everything that we do, we should do as unto the Lord because he's always watching. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says, Everything you were taught can be put into a few words. Respect and obey God. This is what life is all about. God will judge everything we do, even what is done in secret, whether good or bad. Now, there's bad news, but there's good news. The bad news is God sees what you're doing in secret. But the good news is God sees what you're doing in secret. He sees that five bucks you slipped that homeless person. He sees that trash that you picked up out in the parking lot. He sees that, that person that you blessed or that person you called that nobody knew anything about. And maybe nobody ever will, but God knows. And he'll reward those for what they do in secret. He's seen those times in your prayer closet while you were praying and just interceding and praying for somebody who was hurting or whatever. And nobody knew it. You weren't on the stage. You weren't the preacher with the microphone. But God says, what you do in secret, I'm going to reward you openly. Wow, there's a payday coming. So there's good news. Amen? Amen? And again, man sees the outside, but God sees excellence on the inside of you. Matthew 6, 2, Jesus said, When you give to the poor, don't blow a loud horn. That's what show-offs do in the meeting places and on the street corners because they're always looking for praise. I can assure you that they already have their reward. When you give to the poor, don't let anyone know about it. Then your gift will be given in secret. Your father knows what is done in secret and he will reward you. Now, I know there are some things as a church that we let people know because we want you to know we're being good stewards of the finances that God's given us. We'll let you know about the things we've done, like the box truck that we bought to help feed the poor or things like that. And it's not so any of us can get a pat on our back or that we can say, hey, we're great, but to be accountable. I believe it's important to be accountable with your finances. And that's why we have a finance department and elders that they set our wages. I don't set write my own paycheck, you know. It's like I don't determine how much I'm going to make. I trust the Lord with that. I don't care about the money, honestly. I think it's great. Praise God, we're debt free. Hallelujah. That's more that we can give. Hey, Amen. that sets Granberry up. Now we're looking for a new building. We're ready to buy. Come on, let's get a bigger place. It's exciting so we can help more people. It's all about him. It's not about us or what we have or what we don't have. It's all about what we can give. Amen? And so Jesus said, when you pray, don't be like the show-offs who love to stand up and pray in the meeting places and on the street corners. They do this just to look good. And I can sure assure you they already have their reward. Well, could you imagine if this was the only reward I got? That would be a bummer. I don't do this for praise or even caring what people think or that you would clap for me or whatever because I don't want that reward. I don't want claps from you. I want claps from God. I, I desire him, right? And so, yeah, I am up here on a stage and I'm preaching the gospel and I'm, I'm publicly proclaiming Christ, but I don't do it for the glory. Something my dad always told me too, the three G's, watch out for, and it's important for any minister, but I'll say for any person, the, the, the gold... The glory and the girls, or guys, if you're a girl guy, right? The gold, the glory, and the girls. Stay away from the three G's. Don't touch them, he said. And I listened to him. I said, thank you, God. I don't want the gold. It's all his. I don't want the glory. It's all his. And the girls, I got one girl, and, and she's all I need, all I want. Let me tell you, you don't want this guy. If you're a girl, let me tell you, you don't want this guy. Because I would not be a blessing to you. I was born to be a blessing to one woman, and that's my wife. 
So God sees everything. We have to realize that. I think of a story of a family that was out shoplifting. It was one of those families that they worked together, right? <laughs> and so the dad says, son, you look this way. Tells the other son, you look that way. As he was about to steal something, he felt the tug on his coat from the littlest one. And he said, dad, who's going to look up to see if God's watching? <laughs> yeah, God is watching. Numbers 32, 23 says, but what if you fail to do your duty? Then you'll be sinning against the Lord, and you can be sure that your sin will be discovered. It will be brought out into the open. And there are a lot of people, a lot of churches that have no accountability, and so then eventually it comes out into the open, and it's a problem, and it's manifest because they didn't deal with it in the beginning stages when it was small. That's the easiest time to uproot something is when it's small. and Get those things out of your life. To say, I'm not going to let that grow and flourish. In my, I'm not going to feed that thing. I'm going to chop it off and dig it up and throw it out in Jesus' name. Amen? So again, you, you never get away with it. Proverbs 15.3 says, The Lord sees everything, whether good or bad. Colossians 3.23 says, do your work willingly as though you were serving the Lord himself and not just your earthly master. In fact, the Lord Christ is the one you are really serving and you know that he will reward you. Again, God is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So number one point as we're wrapping up, being excellent starts on the inside. Number two, excellence is doing what is right just because it's right. Number three, excellence does what is right even when nobody is watching. And then number four, being excellent will change the way you speak and what you speak about. Proverbs 8, 6 says, listen, for I will speak of excellent things. I want to speak of excellent things. After I'm with somebody, I don't want them to walk away and say, what did we just talk about? Let's speak of excellent things and say, hey, let's speak of things that are godly, that are a blessing. And sometimes it just takes a shift. We've all done it. We've all got caught into speaking negative things or bummer things or, man, complaining, murmuring, griping. It says, listen, for I will speak of excellent things, and from the opening of my lips will come right things, for my mouth will speak truth, wickedness, and as abomination to my lips." All the words of my mouth are with righteousness. Nothing crooked or perverse is in them. Wow, to be, to be not crooked in our speech and what we say. Again, it's important. James 3.10 says, Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brethren or my cistern, these things ought not to be so. To where I don't know if you're going to bless me or cuss me. It should just be one or the other. Out of the same mouth comes blessing or cursing. True excellence changes the inside. And then as that changes, it will change things that we speak. Luke 6.45, and I don't think you have this one back there, Donnie. But it says, good people do good things because of the good in their hearts. And bad people do bad things because of the evil in their hearts. Your words show what is in your heart. So your words are like a mirror. When you go look at yourself in the mirror and you got something on you that you're like, whoa, I didn't even know I had that dirt mark on. I was mowing the yard and wiping my head and I'm walking around all day with this or whatever. Or you know how ladies are. You got mascara and it's down here. Or you got lipstick on your teeth. And you've been talking to people all day and you go look in the mirror and go, oh my gosh, I had lipstick on my teeth all day. And we care so much about that. But it's the outside. What about the inside? What have you been going around spreading all day? Come on, think about it. Yeah, we, what's in your heart is reflected by what comes out of your mouth. So again, as God changes us, and again, it's not from the outside in. It's when God comes in you, all of a sudden, you just want to speak better words and more excellent things. And it works when you're full of the Holy Spirit. Good things come out of you. Get full of the Holy Ghost and not full of yourself. John 7, 38 says, Have faith in me, 
This is Jesus talking. Have faith in me and you will have life-giving water flowing from deep inside you. Just as the scriptures say, Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit who would be given to everyone that had faith in him. He was saying only by the Holy Ghost can this happen. You got to be spirit-filled. We're a spirit-filled church if you don't have figured that out. There's something about being filled with the Spirit. And people talk about like, oh, that's a bad thing. Being full of the Holy Ghost means that's what's coming out of your life. The Holy Spirit is good. We should stay filled. Amen? Be constantly filled and not let ourselves get full of ourselves, like I said. So, again, it changes something on the inside. And so many times we don't know, how do I fix this? Bottom line, how do I fix this? I was 17 years old, Colby. I don't know how old you are. How old are you, Colby? 14. You're 14. You're, you're very mature for your age at 14. I was 17, and I looked like I was 14. Actually, I was 24, and I looked like I was 14. <laughs> <laughs> but I go, I, go to, I go to the Olive Garden where I worked when I was 17, right? And so... Um, this manager, big old muscle man, I mean manager, huge guy. And he calls me into the office. So I said, okay. And he was always just serious and could, he could do stuff in the, in the store nobody else could do. I remember one time they, the pasta machine got all backed up and, and they couldn't get the dye off that makes the pasta. And man, this guy, I mean, ripped the thing off. I was like, that dude is massive. He calls me into the office, Daniel, I need to talk to you. And he comes in there, and he shuts the door. And as soon as he shuts the door, he starts bawling like a baby. I was like, what is going on? He just starts, oh, 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 oh. I said, what's going on, man? And he said, I have a cussing problem. He said, I can't stop, and it's affecting my relationship with my wife. And my wife doesn't want me to even have anything to do with my kid because she's afraid I'm a, my kids are going to start cussing because of me. And I can't stop. And there's no, it's on the inside of me. And what do I do? And I said, let me tell you, I've been telling you, it's Jesus on the inside that can change you. You can't change yourself from the outside in. I can slap you all you want. I can pop you with rubber bands and put money in a cuss jar. But I'm telling you, until you get the cuss out of you from the inside, it's not going to change you from the outside side amen come on let's praise Jesus that let's all stand up hallelujah if we could have the worship team come on up again it's the Holy Ghost I remember in this very church when I was a kid we used to sing this song it's the Holy Ghost on the inside working on the outside oh what a change in my life it's the Holy Ghost on the inside working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. We don't sing songs like that anymore, you know? The same thing over and over. Oh, what a change because it's the Holy Ghost. I got him on the inside. And I tell you what, when Jesus comes in, he moves in and the devil moves out. You'll find, you'll quit dealing drugs and you'll start dealing Jesus. There's something about you, you just want to start telling people about what God has done for you. Man, something has changed in me. In fact, you don't even have to say it because people will ask you, what has changed in you? I see a difference. You used to be this way, and now you're that way. Y'all can go ahead and just play whatever you want. You don't have to play the old 80s songs. I know people too they've come to me and they said you know I would come to church but I'm just too I'm too dirty let me let me get my life cleaned up a little bit first and then I'll come and I say listen that's like saying I'm too dirty to come take a shower you're never gonna get yourself clean it's like trying to wash yourself standing in a mud puddle you lift one foot and get it clean then you lift the other one and then your other one's dirty again that's how it is. But with Jesus, he lifts you up out of the mud puddle, out of the miry clay, as the Bible says. And he puts your feet on a rock, and he cleanses you and makes you righteous. It only can come through him. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Somebody said, I'm not worthy to come to church or to come before him. Yeah, that's true. But you know what? He's still worthy. He's still worthy of your praise. 
It's not your worthiness. It's his worthiness. It's not your righteousness. It's his righteousness. Again, the Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags. I don't want anyone to leave this place without an opportunity to make things right with God and to have the Holy Spirit on the inside of them. As I've been preaching, somebody said, I need that and I want that. If you're here this morning and you want to ask Jesus to come in, he said, if you ask, I'll answer. If you'll knock, uh, I'll open the door. If you'll seek, you'll find me. If you're here this morning, you say, I need excellence on the inside. I want to change. Maybe you're like that big muscle man who said, I need a change. There's something that's not right in me. And it's from the inside that I need that change. Again, one prayer can and will make a difference. Jesus said, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It actually says that three times in the Bible, in the Old and the New Testament. Whosoever calls on the Lord shall be saved. Not might be, not maybe, not I hope so but shall be. So if you're here this morning, you say, I want to receive Jesus in my heart. Maybe you want to come back to God or you want to make sure if you died today that you would go to heaven and you want to know for sure, you can know for sure. So if you're here this morning on any one of those three invitations, either to ask Jesus in your life, come back to God or make sure, I want you to just lift your hand right now and say, pray for me. And I'm going to say a prayer for you and it'll be a cleansing prayer. Just lift it up high and wave it. Say, pray for me. Thank you. I see that hand in the back. Thank you. I see that hand in the back there. That's two. Anybody else? You say, yeah, pray for me. I just want to change on the inside. Maybe you've been trying so hard from the outside. Thank you. I see that other hand. You've been trying and trying and trying, trying to get free, but you just haven't. God's saying, I'm changing you now. It's going to be easy. I'm taking the desire for that stuff away, and I'm putting new desires. The Bible's going to become a new book to you. You're going to crave it. You're going to crave worship like never before because that new you on the inside desires those things. You're going to be able to say, I've been changed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you raised your hand or if you should have raised your hand, let's all pray this prayer together. What you're doing is you're giving Jesus permission. He comes in where he's welcome and where he's invited. So you're giving him permission to come into your life and to start throwing out stuff. You're giving him permission to come in and start rearranging your furniture and changing things in your house. And saying, Jesus, have your way. It's more excellent than mine. And watch what will happen. If you pray that, want to pray that prayer, just say it after me. Let's all say it together. In fact, with your heart and your lips out loud, say, Father God. Let's all say it together. Say, Father God, I come to you now based on your word. You said, if I call on the name of the Lord, that you would save me. God, save me. I do believe Jesus is the Son of God. That his blood cleanses me of all unrighteousness. God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me a passion for the lost. And a hunger for the things of God. Give me a holy boldness. To preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am saved. I am forgiven. I'm on my way to heaven. And I have excellence on the inside of me because I have Jesus on the inside. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a hand clap. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, let me tell you what you need to do at this point. Again, you're going to find yourself starting to crave the Word of God. If you don't have a Bible, we've got Bibles back here on this little table. Go by and grab one if you need one. If you lifted your hand, there's also a packet in there that will help you in your next steps with the Lord. I encourage you, don't let one mistake cause you to slip back into negativity. You know, there were times in life it seemed like I went forward two steps and got knocked back five. But then I went forward three steps and got knocked back two. 
And then I went forward five steps and got knocked back one. And then there were times I was going 10 steps and I realized again, I, I'm not where I used to be. Look how far I've come. And that's how life is. Sometimes the first time people get knocked back there, oh, well, there must not be excellence on the inside of me. I may as well give up and just go back to living. No, don't do that. Just don't quit because you're guaranteed. You've already won. Amen. That's the good news. Hallelujah. Well, I've preached. Well, I've got three minutes to land this plane. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're going to try to beat everybody to Spring Creek, right? Wherever you're going. All the other churches, we're going to try to beat them. And say, Pastor Daniel, let us out early. I'm going to pray a blessing on you. Lift, Just stretch your hands out like this. I also want the prayer team, if you could come on up and stand at the front. We're going to have a prayer team that's up here. Some people might need, you might need to talk to somebody and just get somebody to hold hands with you and pray with you. And if that's you, again, as soon as we dismiss, I want you to come up here and just spend a moment. Just say, hey, pray for me. You might be like that guy that you want to specifically say, hey, I have this problem and I need you to pray for me. Because I'm telling you, agreement, there's power in agreement. You're not alone. I just want you to know you're not alone. As you stretch forth your hands, I'm going to pray a blessing on you. And then you're dismissed. And then if you need prayer, come on up here. These prayer team leaders will be glad to pray with you. Well, as the pastor here at the Granbury Heights Church campus, I just pray may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace this week in your home, your life, your family, and everything that pertains to you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless y'all. We'll see you next week. Tell a friend. Bring somebody. Next week, 1045, right here. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. We pray that you have been blessed by God's word. For more information, visit us online at heightslife.org.